it's still um, a day where we want to kind of um, preparation day in some sense. So we want to still do some basic things to set up uh, all the machinery, all the basic notions we need in order to study um, locally Hamiltonian flows. So let me first do, uh, before I start with the uh, background notions, let me recall you. So we are interested in studying a locally Hamiltonian flow or smooth area preserving flow, preserving a smooth area form uh, on a surface of genus at least one. And uh, we are interested in uh, mixing. And uh, last time I spent a lot of time defining Hamiltonian flows and defining mixing. So uh, in order to actually uh, work with flows, we will need a very concrete representation as uh, special flows over interval exchange maps. And this is what we are going to do in a second. But before I start with the basic definitions, I want to give you a spoiler or a preview of what it will go on. So we said last time that uh, if I have a surface of higher genus, or uh, I start from the torus in the Arnold case, we have uh, uh, singular points. And we will look at uh, uh, Hamiltonian saddles. Simple Hamiltonian Hamiltonian saddles. So there will always be such a, a, a thing, singular point. And one key feature, so key feature of uh, 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 of this Hamiltonian flow, which is very different than translation flows. So we saw in a translation flow, you hit this singular point in finite time. And this uh, singular point creates a discontinuity. Ma in the key feature is that uh, in this locally Hamiltonian parametrization, because I want, hi, I just started. We started 15 minutes late, so you didn't miss anything. Key feature is that it takes uh, infinite time, infinite time along the separatrix. to reach the saddle. Let's call it P. So this saddle point, you will never reach it in a finite amount of time. So if I'm traveling on this separatrix, I will slow down uh, and take infinite amount of time to get there. And for this reason, even if I start very close to, to, to uh, the separatrix, the closer I am to the separatrix, the more my trajectory will slow down. So uh, the closer the separatrix, the closer uh, to the separatrix to P we pass, the more we slow down. And how we will make this formal today, how much we slow down, the more we slow down. This is a preview and an heuristic. And these different deceleration rates, so the closer I am, the more I slow down, will create a key phenomenon. So maybe let me just write it, and then I will explain. So deceleration rates, deceleration rates create different deceleration rates, create shearing. And this is the key word of today, and it's the key word of many parabolic flows. So let me explain what I mean by this. Maybe I will draw another picture where my saddle is a little bit more uh, flat, a little bit more flat, so I can draw some trajectories on one side. <coughs> so say that you start with a little arc which is transversal to the flow on one side of the saddle. So if you have a gamma arc transversal to phi t, uh, and you start flowing it, and you consider phi t gamma, you flow it. So what will happen? That uh, points on the left in my picture will slow down a lot near the saddle. 
points on the right will also slow down a little, but much less, okay? Because the closer I am this endpoint is, the more time it takes me to move. So what is happening? It's happening that my arc is actually shearing. Do you see the phenomenon? I move a different speed along the arc. Uh, phi is sheared, sheared when passing near P. And uh, in the flow direction, in phi T direction. And essentially what can happen, uh, what will happen in some cases, what will not happen always, but imagine that uh, uh, if, uh, if, uh, uh, if this trajectory gets very much sheared, what will happen? It will, let's, let's pick a small arc, and let's assume that it's sheared a lot, it will approximate a flow trajectory. So it will become a closer and closer to a flow trajectory. But if I know that my flow is uh, ergodic or uniformly distributed, long trajectories will wind around the surface and wrap around the surface and fill the surface densely. So, so if phi t uh, uh, gets uh, as t tends to infinity uh, approximates a trajectory of Vt, and Vt, uh, 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 okay, if Vt a trajectory, let me just say that, um, what is the picture on the surface first, maybe I have so if I have a small arc, and when I flow it, it becomes essentially very much uh, uh, shadowing a trajectory, um, then let me write this slogan, mixing can be reduced, reduced to equidistribution of the flow. Of fifty uh, trajectories. And uh, this is essentially ergodicity, which is of the flow, which is much less than mixing. So mixing via shearing, reduced to equidistribution. Sorry, uh, this is why title mixing via shearing. When you have shearing, you can reduce mixing to equidistribution. So if you know that your trajectory winds around the surface and it equidistributed, then I can prove mixing. How? Well, the idea is that, that you take a small set A, say, take a small set A, and you uh, decompose it into arcs transverse to your flow, and push it, when I push a set A, so to push, to push uh, phi T of A, you push little arcs, little transverse arcs, arcs, little transverse arcs, uh, uh, which uh, cover, cover A. And basically, you, the whole set will equidistribute just because each single arc will. So you remember, mixing means that if I push a set, it will get equidistributed. Okay? Instead of pushing the whole set, I will do a Fubini kind of argument. I will cut my set, I will uh, look at it in the direction transverse to the flow, and push separately small arcs. So in some dynamical systems, like hyperbolic dynamical systems, when if something is mixing, it's really the whole set e points somehow gets equidistributed. Here, I don't really need the whole set. Something stronger is true. Small arcs get equidistributed. And then by Fubini, I can approximate other measurable sets. Does it make sense? 
uh, which cover A, each, each of which, which gets equidistributed. So this is, if you want the preview, if you want the spoiler, so this is the geometric picture that I want to explain today and uh, make precise. But I wanted to give it at the beginning. So you already have, and if you are left with something out of today's lecture, this is your motto. In parabolic dynamical systems, very often, if there is mixing, it happens through shearing. So this is a phenomenon which we will see today for locally Hamiltonian, for some locally Hamiltonian flow in the good uh, open set, but it's really ubiquitous. And if you like horocycle flow and hyperbolic surfaces, this mechanism was used by Marcus for the horocycle flow. There are no saddles, but the shearing happens for uh, 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 intrinsic reasons for the commutation relation between geodesic and horocycle. If you push a geodesic arc by the horocycle flow, you see shearing. And there are other contests uh, like in elliptic flows. Bassam Fayyad, for example, was able to take a linear flow on a higher dimensional torus and time change it to get mixing, and he gets mixing via shearing. So, and the story is long. There are time changes of nil flows. There are other sets up, but it's really in a lot of the parabolic systems. Okay, great. So this was my. Uh, we did it at the beginning. So I'm uh, now we want to start from the beginning, start from, uh, to make this rigorous. So let me, I need to introduce uh, interval exchange maps. So IET stands for interval exchange map. Uh, just for curiosity, how many people have seen interval exchange maps? Uh, the majority, who has not seen, sorry, ever? Nobody. Okay, maybe I can. No, uh, nobody has not seen. We, you have. Okay, I will still recall the definition, but quickly. Okay, so first of all, let me just. Uh, so I have my flow. So I just want to uh, pick a transversal. So sigma contained in S transversal arc, and uh, I want to look. Uh, at uh, t from sigma to sigma, uh, the Poincaré map. So Poincaré maps. Let's let's not go too fast. But Poincaré first return map. Okay, so um, I said dynamical systems really go back to end of 1800, 18, and Poincaré is kind of one of the first people who, the father, if you want, of the dynamical systems. And this is the key idea he had to study flows on surfaces a long time ago, that if I have a flow, it might be useful to uh, pass through a map to discretize your continuous time. And uh, let me recall you what is the Poincaré map. So if I take my little transversal, so it's my red segment here, I can take a point and follow the trajectory uh, until the first time it returns to this arc, if it returns to the arc. But we are in a conservative system. So, okay, so, okay let me write. And I want to get a transformation from t, t from the arc to itself which takes a point and maps it to the first return time along the leaf. So I will write something. So, so given, given x in sigma, let r of x, return time, be the minimum uh, t greater than 0, such that phi t of x is again in sigma, if defined. So let me just uh, not worry yet about whether it exists. But if I come back, uh, this is the first time when I'm back to my cross section. Ah, it is a spoiler here. Okay. 
uh, and then you define uh, t of x as flow until the first return time of x. And this is, again, a point in sigma by definition. Okay? You flow. The map is what the point where I get after, well, the first time I come back. Uh, so let me give you an example. And uh, the example I prepared before, and uh, first we'll do a simple example, which is the linear flow. So you remember we had uh, yesterday uh, this picture of the octagon, regular octagon with opposite sides identified, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, the linear flow. I travel along straight lines modulo the gluings. And in my picture here, I need a visible color. Will red be good enough? So I took this as a section, a diagonal here. So this is my sigma. So it's a loop, actually, in the surface, because we saw the endpoints are all the same. So if this is my section, and I want to understand what is t, I take a point x on this diagonal. And what do I have to do? I have to follow the flow. So here I go out, B is glued to B, so I come back here, and I come back there. So this will be T of X. This is the first time I'm back to the cross-session, okay? And you can see that all points which project, if I project the B side down, all these points will do the same, will travel and come back here. So all the purple interval will come back here. And you can also see that the, this ma the return map is discontinuous. So I if I, on two sides of a separate matrices, this part will take one history, the other side will do another game, right? So the Poincaré map is discontinuous. So all the purple interval maps here, all the red interval under the C side will follow C, so here will follow C and come back on this red interval. So here below, I drew the Poincaré map starting an image. So each, there are four intervals, one under each side. And when I do follow the flow, they come back translated. OK, so it's a piecewise, piecewise translation. It's a discontinuous map. And uh, clear? Yeah? This picture, I think, is very enlightening. But and uh, just even easier picture, if you prefer, just linear flow on the torus. You can do it in the linear flow on the torus. In this case, you have two intervals. So here the cross-session I chose is a 0, 1. So sigma is 0, 1. Maybe close. And uh, these points will just, this 0, 1 is bottom and top, right? So these points are immediately back when they are in the top. And they are shifted by an amount which you can compute is, uh, uh, the shift is cotangent of theta by trigonometry. And what about this remaining interval? This one hits the vertical side. The vertical side is glued to the other side. And when I come back, I'm there. So it's uh, basically an exchange of two intervals. But this is an artificial discontinuity, because if you think of it on the circle, once this is a loop, this is nothing else than the rotation. So this is nothing else than x plus alpha mod 1. Okay, So it's a map where I rotate, I add alpha modulo 1. Okay, So if I open this on 0, 1, I see it as discontinuous. Okay, Good. Uh, OK, so in the case of the torus, linear flow Poincaré map is a rotation. But uh, in the higher genus case, I really need discontinuous maps. So let me recall you, recall you because you know. But uh, so definition uh, t from i to i, so i says uh, 0, 1, or an interval, is an IT, interval change transformation, standard IT, first, if 
uh, there exists i1 dot 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 id and you can think of them as open or semi-open so sometimes today i would like to think of them as open but sometimes you can think them as one side closed one side open uh, intervals <coughs> such that I'm looking at the picture above so I I can write it as union from 1 to D of this AI this is a, a disjoint union maybe if I don't want if I want my intervals to be open mod 0 so apart from finitely many points my uh, intervals uh, uh, fill the interval so think here this would be IA, IB, IC, ID their union is uh, the interval <coughs> and I is also equal to the union from 1 to D of T of I so their images and again this joint and again mod 0 so the intervals after applying the IT are uh, reshuffled to give me back uh, 0, 1. And am I done? Uh, no. If I want a standard IT, uh, I want also to say uh, that the map and, and the T from II to T of II on each of these interval t is a translation okay. so I have intervals so uh, so if you want in particular the length of td of i i is equal to the length of i and maybe we will sometimes we will call it lambda i so they are they are really a rigid translation on each interval Uh, okay. So the map is one to one, apart possibly from finitely many endpoints, and uh, acts as a rigid translation on each interval. So it's a piecewise isometry. And in, if I drop the last request, so you can also get. Uh, 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 generalized IT normally when you say IT interval exchange transformation you just mean this uh, translation but uh, generalized IT you just have the same same but uh, uh, T from II to T of II you want it to be uh, basically um, injective one-to-one uh, one-to-one one default so you basically want uh, allow for distortion so you don't each um, each interval is mapped to its image in a, in a uh, orientation preserving so basically you just can distort this in image but still you want that your map is piecewise default and the images give you back the full interval. So this one is a piecewise isometry, this one is a piecewise default. One-to-one -one piecewise default, okay? And, uh, uh, okay, so we already saw through an example uh, that standard IT will arise by looking at Poincaré maps of the linear flow. If I do, uh, now uh, uh, let's do a lemma uh, fitty uh, ah let me be a little bit more careful fitty locally Hamiltonian uh, ah it's okay no I don't need to have my minimality yet uh, uh, 
Do I want it? Maybe I'll put it later. Um, OK, that's fine. And uh, sigma uh, transversal and uh, t from sigma to sigma Poincare map is a generalized IT. And uh, one can choose coordinates can choose suitable coordinates, coordinates in your charts, such that t is a standard IT. OK, I'll sketch uh, the proof. Okay, proof. Uh, so where do the discontinuities come from? Well, we already know our flow must have uh, uh, saddles, right, somewhere. Uh, let me draw the picture with two simple saddles. There are some incoming and some outgoing. So. So let uh, uh, consider basically how the discontinuities happen on the Poincaré map. They really correspond to points which map into the separatrix and then are split. So what you have to do is to pull back, pull back all separatrices until if they until, uh, no, no, plot this here. And, and pull back the incoming separatrices until they hit the, the uh, sigma. So consider, uh, so basically remove, remove, let's do, remove points in I, in sigma, which uh, uh, are pullbacks of incoming separatrices. I hope you understand what I mean, if I don't like it, write it too precisely, but I think it's clear. So you remove points which uh, lie on a separatrix and are uh, swallowed by the saddle. Those points will never come back, so the Poincaré map is not defined there. And I also want to remove uh, pull back of the endpoints of the segments. So imagine that I have a Poincaré map at some point, I come back and I hit uh, part of my uh, uh, curve hits the segment and part goes out. This will also create a discontinuity in the Poincaré map. So maybe I'll do it in a different color. So you can also take your, your uh, endpoints and pull them back and they might give you some supplementary discontinuities. So this one again, I pull it back. I don't know, maybe it comes from here. Uh, no, come from you know, uh, here, something like this. So you remove all these points which give you issue. And then the claim is that uh, T on complementary intervals so I removed finitely many points if I am in a connected component so if I am in an interval bounded by two adjacent of these points then I claim that uh, the Poincaré map T is continuous. So basically, uh, uh, yeah, two points which are nearby, 
stay far from, from any singularity and any other reason to split up. So when they come back, they will come back. If they are sufficiently close, they will come back close. Okay? So this essentially gives you uh, generalized INT. Okay, uh, I said continuous is actually also maybe differentiable. So uh, if I assume differentiable in my definition, maybe let's say smooth and smooth. Uh, this is the sketch of the first part. But I also said that you can choose coordinates where I actually see a standard IT. So far, I just got a piecewise smooth map. So if I want to um, uh, make it uh, uh, a standard IT, then I have to change my coordinates. So first, let me remark that if fit preserves a smooth area form, a smooth uh, mm, mu area form, so fully supported without atomic, uh, uh, atomic, without without atoms, then uh, uh, this implies that also the Poincaré map preserves a smooth measure mu. This is kind of Liouville measure. So it's a general fact in dynamical system. If I have a flow that preserves a measure, you can kind of imagine of kind of building uh, the measure new by restriction. So somehow you can take a small flow box and send uh, one, uh, the, the component orthogonal to the flow to zero, and you get a measure on the cross section. So it's like a Fubini kind of. <laughs> And uh, this will be preserved. So actually, in our case, let me recall you that we have very precise uh, property. We have the Hamiltonian flow is such that the contraction on the generating vector field of the smooth area form is a smooth closed one form. This is what we did yesterday. So actually, nu is given uh, by eta by integrating eta along the section. So, and uh, basically what I want to do is to choose uh, coordinates such that uh, eta becomes Lebesgue. So if I have a smooth measure with no atoms on my interval, I can always reparameterize my interval so that the measure is actually Lebesgue. Okay, so I'm not going to write more, but this is just uh, the idea. So in the coordinates where my smooth invariant measure is Lebesgue, then my map preserves Lebesgue locally, so it must be a standard IT. Okay, so that's how we reduce to IT. And um, good. Uh, and now we need to. Uh, so now we discover that, okay, uh, Poincare sessions are well understood maps. And indeed, we know a lot of properties of uh, interval exchange maps. Maybe I will call you later. And some of these properties automatically go to the flow. So mm, maybe we'll say this later, but. Uh, the key thing is that to study mixing, it's crucially important. The, the, the Poincaré map is not sufficient. It's really important the return time. It's important how long it takes me to come back to this section. So what I want to do next is to uh, give you a way to recover uh, uh, an explicit description of the flow from the Poincaré map and the return time. So again, this is a standard construction in ergodic theory. So this is the special flow representation. Okay. So again, who's seen this? Someone? Not not few. So it's good to define. Uh. Okay. So what is the motivation? for this construction that uh, recover a flow from 
to data from one current map plus return time. So if I only give you a Poincaré map and tells you it's the Poincaré map of the flow, you don't know what the flow is. But if I give you the Poincaré map and I tell you how long it takes me to come back, then I claim that you can recover enough information of the flow to be able to do all the ergodic theory you want and study. Uh, and you can be, this is we are going to build this explicit model of the flow, which is what we will be working from now on. Okay. Okay, so first uh, uh, construction. So I have a transformation from I to I, say I is 0, 1. And I give myself a function, which is uh, positive, maybe even greater than some constant greater than 0. And maybe uh, it will be integrable with respect to the invariant measure of the flow, but I'll write it later. Uh, so let me just plot two here. So I have t, and I have a function. For now, I will draw it smooth. In a second, we'll have to draw it with discontinuities. OK, so this is the Poincaré map. Uh, and this function will be the return time function. And I want to build a flow from uh, a discrete map. So uh, before we took a section, now we kind of have to lift the, the, the map to a flow. So what do I do? Define, uh, let's call it XF. This is basically, uh, I'm drawing the picture in R2. But of course, uh, you could have taken any space in the base. So you don't need any measurable space. Maybe. So here, xf will be the area under the graph of f. So sf is the set of points x, y in uh, uh, R2, such that x is in i, and 0 less than 1 less than uh, uh, maybe f of x. So this is the region under the graph of f. <coughs> and this will be my phase space where the flow will act. And uh, now I want to basically build a flow whose Poincaré map is my given t. Right? I'm trying to build a flow whose Poincaré map is t. And the flow is very simple. Uh, definition. I will draw it first. So what I want to do is for every point in my space, I want to flow vertically upward with unit speed until I hit the top. And then what do I do? I want to basically glue the top to the base through the transformation t. So if this was x, when I get to the top, I have to come back to t of x. And then I keep moving up. And when I'm back again, I'm back at t square of x, and so on, right? So if I build a flow like this, by construction, the Poincaré map to the base is t. Okay, I'm skewing the vertical flow with t to have the Poincaré map. <coughs> th th so sorry, um, if you have never seen this, th does it make sense? Uh, what time uh, is it clear? So I'll write some definition. So I'm calling it phi t, and maybe let's call it phi t of t comma f, because it depends on t and f. Uh, a special flow, did I call it special? Sometimes some suspension, but a special flow over t under the roof, roof f. And first, I'll give you informal definition, and then we'll write a formula under the roof f is unit speed vertical flow uh, uh, after identifications.
of uh, the points of the form x, f of x. So this is the point on the top. S, f of x is the point on the top. And this one I want to glue it, identify it with t of x, comma 0. So this point, x, f of x, is identified to t of x, comma 0. OK? Sorry, this is, um, okay. L I will tell you how it relates to the locally Hamiltonian flow. W wait a second, yes. So this is for now, uh, I, will I will give you a precise statement in a second, so just be patient. Um, uh, okay, so let me before, I, uh, let me just make some easy remarks. So remark is that if T preserves uh, some measure mu, uh, phi T preserves uh, 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 mu cross Lebesgue. So I'm, I'm translating with unit speed in the vertical direction. So Lebesgue measure is invariant on each fiber, on each trajectory. So uh, measure preserving up or down. And this is indeed, uh, V is in, uh, et, 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 uh, nu is indeed kind of the Lebesgue, uh, the Liouville measure for this uh, product measure. So it's a restriction. And uh, um, okay, and I also want uh, a formula that we will use later today. So uh, it's better to write a formula. Formula. So to write a formula, I need uh, in formula for fit. Yes. So I need one more definition. So I need, so when I'm flowing, say I start by the base, uh, how much I'm flowing up? I'm flowing f of x, right? Then I will continue flowing for f of t of x. Then I will flow for f at t square of x. So the amount, the, the, the height of each fiber is the value of the function along the orbit. So I need to introduce Birkhoff sums. So definition, uh, the Birkhoff sum, uh, so S n of f of x, this will be a sum along the orbit, or Birkhoff or ergodic sum, and this is my notation, is equal to the sum from 0, so k from 0 to n minus 1 of the function along the flow along the orbit of x. <coughs> and uh, so I will only write the formula for a base point, but you can just shift it easily and get the formula for the any other point. <coughs> so say that I start at uh, x0 in the base and uh, flow, uh, and I want to compute uh, uh, flow for time t. So where do I get? Well, I need to know how many iterates of the Poincare map I do in time t. So I need to count in time t how many full fibers do I cover. So define what I will call nt of x. This is the discrete number of iterations in time t. Let me write it first. Discrete number of iterations of t in time, flow time t. This will be the max n in n uh, such that s n f of x 
is less than t, maybe less or equal. Okay. <coughs> so if you think that this Birkhoff sums, it tells me the length of the fiber, this is how many full fibers I can fit up to time t, right? So, so then fit t of x is 0. So where am I? So I'm going to flow for time t. That means that I can fit n of t full uh, up and down. So I go up and come back n of t times. And where will I be? I will be above the nt iterate of, of, of t. And at which height? I will be at the reminder height, what is left after I removed all this full fiber. So the formula is I will be above t to the nt of x of x. This is the nt of x iterate of t. And at which height will I be? t minus Sn t of x of f of x. Okay. Sorry, I spent some time to write this formula because uh, later we will talk about shearing, and this formula will be useful to compute shearing. So I want to do. I wanted to have it written up. Okay. Okay. Make sense? So uh, these Birkhoff sums are counting how many discrete iterates. So I relate continuous time with number of discrete iterates, and then I have uh, a reminder, which gives me how much do I still have to flow and where I will be. And uh, um, OK, now I can, I can answer your question how this relates to the original flow. So, and I was a little bit sloppy when I talked about Poincaré map. I didn't tell you why they are defined. So morally, every time you have an invariant measure, you have a finite invariant measure, you have Poincaré recurrence. So almost every point comes back to where you are. So I wasn't worried so much about uh, defining. But now I want to also talk about minimal. So if I want to represent, uh, say, a locally Hamiltonian flow, uh, uh, through a suspension flow, I will need minimality. I will need to ensure that all orbits intersect my section, uh, or all but finitely many. So let me, okay, maybe let me plot for one second on the side. Let me plot Arnold flow. And recall you that Arnold flow is what I have after I remove the trap. It's the flow on the complement of the trap, this locally Hamiltonian flow on T2. So I move the trap and phi T is the in the complement is the Arnold flow. Red is bad. So red is not uh, nothing. It's outside. And imagine uh, so this part I, I don't care about. So I'm interested in what is called the minimal component, which typically will be minimal. So let me say definition F S prime inside S is a minimal component of some locally Hamiltonian flow of t. If so, S prime uh, is a subsurface, possibly with boundary, with boundary. Possibly with boundary. Could be everything if the flow is minimal. Could be really an honest subsurface with boundary. In this example, it would be a torus with a hole. And, uh, uh, um, and uh, uh, the boundary of S prime is union of trajectories of Vt. Usually it would be separatrices and uh, uh, saddle loops, usually e.g. saddle loops, separatrices, 
uh, fixed points. So in my picture, the boundary uh, is the boundary of the hole is a union of my fixed point and my saddle loop, which is a trajectory of the flow. And uh, so I don't want basically my flow to escape through the boundary. And the key to call it minimal. Uh, so every, every infinite trajectory uh, of phi t on S prime. So not in this picture, but in the higher genus picture. So you have something like this. I can still have saddles, right? So if I this surface has higher genus, they will be fixed points, and uh, uh, some trajectories will die into the fixed point. So when I say infinite, I mean basically not separatrices. Maybe infinite is wrong, actually, because it's not. Uh, it is also infinite on the separatrix, but I mean, let me maybe say. <laughs> Not sep by here I mean not separatrix, so which has infinite lengths. I don't know how to not, I don't know how to say it, but yeah. Uh, on S is dense. Is dense in S prime. So this what means minimal, so that all trajectories are dense. This is what minimal means in this context. So you exclude the separatrices and the other trajectories fill your densely your subsurface. Okay? Uh, and then, okay, uh, and now I can um, uh, connect the two. Uh, uh, where are we? Uh, okay, so lemma, um, which is a general fact, in some sense, it's a general fact of suspension flows. So if I have. Uh, uh, ah, maybe the lemma I could have stated it later. Okay, we'll, we'll start stating it and then we will add to this lemma in a second. So S prime minimal component sigma cross session or in this case because the flow is minimal the cross session will hit every by infinite orbit will come back to the cross session so I will hit all orbits of my flow, and then phi t, the locally Hamiltonian flow on S prime is isomorphic to the special flow, to the special flow over t from sigma to sigma Poincare map. This is a general fact. I'm not saying anything. Uh, it's a general fact when you have a Poincare session and you want to recover the flow. Uh, it's isomorphic to the special flow over T Poincare map under R, R from sigma to R plus is the first return time function. which we will compute now. So the lemma maybe we'll have a follow up in a second, okay? But this is general ergodic theory nonsense. Uh, nonsense, not nonsense, but. Uh, so I'm not claiming that my flow is the locally Hamiltonian flow, but I'm claiming that my locally Hamiltonian flow is isomorphic to this uh, picture. And isomorphic, let me also write metrically, isom measurably, So, and I don't want to define isomorphism, but this is isomorphism of dynamical systems in measure theory. So you want a one-to-one -one map, which is measurable, which maps the trajectories of one flow to the trajectories of the other flow, and the invariant measure to the invariant measure. So everything which has to be, uh, which you want in ergodic theory, the dynamics and the invariant measure should be uh, mapped into each other by the isomorphism. So from the point of view of ergodic theory, these two flows are the same. So 
all properties of one will be properties of the other. They are indistinguishable from the point of view of ergodic theory. So we will, in some sense, forget about the locally Hamiltonian flow as we defined it yesterday, from now on. And from now on, our locally Hamiltonian flow will be a special flow over an IT, okay, on each minimal component. We are not done because we need to describe this roof function, so I need to tell you how this roof function looks like. Okay, and then we can work with these flows. But uh, uh, yeah, so uh, I will do one more thing, and then we will have a five-minute break. But I want to do one, the first example. I want to do Arnold, and then maybe tell you the general form. So uh, where do I go? Let's go here. Ah, uh, maybe should I leave you the special flow? Maybe then let's do here. Uh, so here we have. Uh, um, So, example, and ah no, maybe uh, 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 so. So okay, remark. Uh, R has singularities. So if uh, if I am on uh, uh, so the picture of my I have an IT so so uh, near separatrices are blows up to infinity so what do I mean so we know that we have some points which never return we know that the separatrices will not come back. So for those, the return time is infinite. So the claim is that my function will blow up. So actually, some of the singularities could be uh, given by the endpoints, and then will be, they will be fine. But all the singularities which come for all the discontinuities of the IT, which come from separatrices, which gi will give me an infinite return time. Okay, And the return time is... Uh, Smooth, so it needs to blow up. Okay, so the picture is not what <laughs> I lied when I drew this picture. That I should draw a roof with peaks. So the roof is not defined at uh, separatrices. How? Which type? Which type? This is uh, an exercise. So an exercise which. Uh, uh, so how do you know, how do you compute this return time? So you, um, you need to do the following. You know, so first of all, if I am outside, or if I, if I, if I don't cross a neighborhood of the singularity, then the, the, the return time is smooth. So nothing happens. So I'd only have to understand what happens locally near a saddle. And uh, uh, I'm assuming that, uh, uh, from yesterday, I'm assuming that I have a simple Hamiltonian saddle. And the uh, normal form, if you want, you can put in coordinates so that uh, this is the Hamiltonian saddle of the Hamiltonian, say, x, y. So I can, you can have to do a little computation. So you have to plot, I don't know, a little neighborhood, say your saddle, you put it in 0, 0, and you find charts. So the, this saddle comes from trajectories of the Hamiltonian flow with that Hamiltonian near a saddle. And maybe you can put, uh, uh, omega uh, equal to some function uh, dx wedge dy. And, and now your, uh, uh, first of all, so h is constant along trajectories, fitted orbits. So the orbits, orbits are are of the form y is equal constant over x. They are pieces of uh, 
little hyperbolas. That's my picture. And now you have to compute uh, how long it takes you to exit this, for example, little square. So you have an explicit form we saw yesterday, this locally Hamiltonian flow, it's Hamiltonian. You can write the vector field and you want to integrate. So you want to find the return time along this piece of hyperbola. So I'm not going to do it. And uh, if you want, uh, so Davide has um, written uh, in his paper, actually he explains this reduction of minimal components to special flows over certain roofs in all details and very nice. So I can recommend uh, Davide. It's on Anal and Rip Wankare. Or, and uh, there is a little computation which also Davide doesn't do, which you can find uh, in a paper of Franchek and myself. Uh, this is just one reference. So, Mass Anal and Appendix. So Arn Arnold, you know, when uh, sorry Arnold gets to here, he says, "Oh, the the form is this." So this is an exercise. But if you want to read the details now, it's also written. You can try. So wh what is wh what is the statement that after you do this computation, what you get that return time blows up. Let me first write it in words and then in formulas, logarithmically. And maybe I need to change uh, the board. So I claim that these peaks, uh, the singularity, have the following form. They are basically uh, absolute value of a log, i.e., near xi. Uh, near an xi, which is uh, singularity, so you want to say that, for example, for x greater than xi, uh, your return time looks like a log, actually, c i plus some constant. The i is for the i singularity, and the uh, uh, plus is for the right side, uh, uh, times the log of the distance, x minus xi, and in absolute value. So that's a log singularity, right? So that's, the, uh, that's this graph. Okay? And, uh, okay. And maybe let me remark that ci plus depends on the saddle. So in my normal form, if you put the saddle in the normal form, so in the normal form, then somehow it's the area form which uh, depends on the saddle, because if I put it in the standard form, this V will depend on the saddle, and then uh, it depends. Does it depends on V0,0? Zero zero, something like this, right? V at the origin or something like this. So, okay, in any case, you can, uh, it's only determined by the saddle. So, and uh, should I, uh, okay, maybe we'll do Arnold and then I will have a quick break. So what is really key in this picture of Arnold flow? So let me say what is key. Let's do the example of the Arnold flow. And maybe now I will plot it like this. So yesterday we also plotted it like in the torus. And I want to put in your picture, put the separatrix on the origin. Okay, I can choose the origin along the separatrix. So remember, this is topologically like a linear flow. And uh, here I have my trap, which I removed, and now consider as a hole in the torus. OK? And uh, PT Arnold flow is isomorphic to 
and here I'm going to put. So we already did the exercise, and if I take uh, this as a section, Poincare map is going to be in suitable coordinates, a rotation, rigid rotation. So here T is equal R alpha. So R alpha of X is X plus alpha mod 1. And you can think of it as a 2 IT, as an IT of two intervals. So it's isomorphic to the special flow over R alpha under the roof. So what is the roof? And so where is the singularity? Here the singularity is at the origin. There's only one singularity in the origin. So the picture should be like this. Right, my function blows up at the two endpoints of the origin, at zero and at one, which is the other side. And uh, it's of the form constant times, let's call it C0 log x in absolute value. This is the side of the origin. And uh, plus, uh, let me write C1 for a second, and this is log of 1 minus x. This is how it blows up at 1. Okay, And maybe I'll remove the definition of the rotation. So then this saying that the origin, which is also 1, doesn't come back, but next to 0 and next to 1, I explode the logarithmic. The, this is the return time, right? The return time is logarithmic. And uh, so how are C0 and C1 related? So, ah, sorry, plus, maybe you have some G of X, which is some smooth, some other smooth part, which come from outside of the saddle, okay? So this is kind of a local behavior at zero, local behavior at one, and the rest will be smooth, okay? So, so this is what we are saying, we are representing the Arnold flow as a special flow over a rotation under a roof with logarithmic singularities. <coughs> what was the key remark of Arnold in this paper where he conjecture mixing? So the key remark is what's the relation between these two constants? So I just said that the constant depends only on the saddle. So if I have a saddle and I go to the right or to the left, I still have the same type of singularity, log times the distance times the same constant. But here, something a little special happens. Here, when I go to the right, I enter a neighborhood of the saddle once. When I go to the left, I actually enter a neighborhood of the saddle twice. So this is the key phenomenon that the trap creates. So Arnold, key remark, key remark is that in this case, C, let's get it right, C1. So when I go from the one side, I do twice the same thing than zero. So C0 is twice, uh, C1 is twice as C0. So there is some kind of asymmetry. And this was Arnold intuition for conjecturing mixing. And we will do start from this in five minutes. And I will tell you how, uh, yes. I will tell you finally the precise statements of the theorems I was, uh, some of the theorems I was mentioning yesterday and uh, uh, start explaining the mixing mechanism for. Okay, but what is important so far we have special flow representation we did it for the Arnold flow. After five minutes, we'll write the general picture for higher genus flows, minimal components. And uh, underline, uh, Arnold remarked that saddle loops, these uh, traps, introduce asymmetry in the return time singularities. Five minutes, shall we start in? Yeah. Then we have 45 minutes because I run. So we, we start at 11.30.
So we are building our special flow representation of our locally Hamiltonian flow on a minimal component. So we look on a subsurface where the flow is minimal and uh, we built essentially everything we need. We already proved that the Poincare map is uh, IT in suitable coordinates and we proved that the uh, return time function will blow up when the, with logarithmically when there are saddles. So first maybe an aside that I was just asked the question and I meant to say it and uh, thanks that you reminded me to say it. So I'm focusing on simple saddles because we said this is the non-generic, uh, this is the generic case in this locally Hamiltonian world but of course you may want to know also what happens when you have multi saddles and this is when you have a multi saddle and also you have another picture which is the picture of stopping point that uh, stopping points so you can take a linear flow and introduce a fake fake singularity so a point which is fixed so this point it takes you infinite time to reach and you have to define locally what this uh, uh, flow will look like. But uh, in this case, uh, this give rise to power uh, singularities. Power singularities. So I, uh, the roof function will look like uh, as x tends to xi will look like 1 over x constant, ci x minus xi to the alpha, where do I need to put an absolute value probably, where uh, uh, <coughs> alpha is some power between 0 and 1. Okay, So it blows up like a power, 1 over x to the alpha. And uh, this is again the case which was studied by Kochergin in the 70s. Kochergin in the 70s studies um, uh, suspension flow, special flows uh, uh, over uh, rotation and also over IT with power singularities. So I will focus on the, on the uh, logarithmic singularity case, but maybe I'm passant, I will tell you also the results in this case. And there is a lot of new developments on finer chaotic properties like uh, uh, the spectrum of these Kochergin flows that uh, some people in the audience um, <laughs> have worked, Forney and Kanigowski and Fayad have been working on. So maybe the last lecture I will mention also some things in this direction. And uh, um, okay, so uh, where are we? So maybe I should continue the lemma we had there because in some sense it's a continuation. So, or maybe. Maybe, no, I'll, I'll put one more thing here. So we just saw that if I have a simple saddle, it creates two singularities which uh, are like, uh, uh, we have the same constant in the logarithmic block up, but if I have a saddle loop, then I have a picture like CI and the two CI, right? So there is this type of picture, simple saddle, uh, on both sides I have a logarithm with the same constant, set the loop, uh, uh, we have this uh, uh, asymmetry. So putting everything together, now I can tell you what the roof is in the general higher genus case. <coughs> and uh, uh, let me write lemma continuation. So we have S prime of some genus greater than one, two and more, more interesting. And uh, uh, so there are two cases, maybe let me write uh, A. So if phi t has uh, actually, uh, no, okay, has, uh, uh, has, ah no, let me do the symmetric first, S. The first case is called S for symmetric, has only simple saddles in S prime. 
So if on your minimal component you only have simple saddles, uh, the roof in the special flow is of the following form, R of x is equal to the sum, let me not put on what, the sum of, lo of ci plus log of x minus xi. So here I want to look at the singularity from the right. So I, first of all, I need to put an absolute value in the log. And then maybe let me put this uh, positive part. So I only want to uh, look at how you approach it from the right. So the notation here is that x plus is uh, x if x is greater than or equal than 0 and 0 otherwise. So this is the positive part, yeah, just a notation. And then plus the sum of ci minus uh, log of x minus xi plus, sorry, the other side will be uh, xi minus x. So this is the distance from the left, and it has a constant ci minus in front, uh, plus g of x, which is mu. Uh, wait a second. Okay, maybe I'll continue here. It's nicer to continue on the same board. So uh, this is uh, the continuation of the previous lemma because I'm specifying the form of the roof function. So the roof function will have uh, logarithmic singularities and uh, where xi are discontinuities of t. So it's important that these uh, singularities of the roof coincide with the discontinuity of the IT. So where the IT splits up, it's because I hit the separatrix, and it's also where the roof is uh, infinite. OK, so they coincide. It's important technically. And what is really important of this case, when there are only simple saddles, no, sorry. Ah, yes, S, S is for symmetric, yes. And what is important that in this case, each saddle produces an equal right and left uh, constant. So it's very important that the sum of the constant to the right and the sum of the constant to the left is equal. The, the, so what I'm saying is that basically, actually, each singularity will, will have the same constant on both sides. It might happen for some that you don't actually see the same constant on the same side, but for every constant on one side, somewhere else it will be a similar constant uh, equal on the other side. So this condition is called symmetri symmetry. So this is condition. So roofs uh, uh, with this property, roof like this, these are called uh, uh, roofs with uh, uh, symmetric, uh, no, have, have symmetric logarithmic singularities. Okay? And the notation I will use not to write everything every time is f belongs to the class of, uh, sorry, sim log of t. So this means that it has symmetric logarithmic singularities at a subset of the discontinuities of t. Okay? So does it make sense? So that's a definition, sim log. Say it again. The mean R is in C. What is F? Where? What is F? F is F belongs. It's a, this is a class. This is a definition. This is a notation for the class of roof functions of that type with this symmetry condition and discontinuities at the discontinuities of T. Okay. 
It's a notation I'm introducing. Th th not your question. It's just that, okay, before it was between R, I guess it's the same thing. Uh, I mean you yeah, F is R. Ah, F is R. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely, you're right. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm also a bit confused about the x plus. So where is the plus supposed to be in the function r of x? Uh, where? Here. This plus over there? Yeah. In the log. So this is just to say that I want to have this is the behavior from the right. So if I don't put the plus, then I'm getting a C plus only when also when I approach. If I put, say, an up, first of all, the log is only defined for a positive argument. So it's inside. It's inside the argument of the log. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, it's uh, the log computed at uh, x minus xi plus. I can put an extra parenthesis if it helps. It's the log of, uh, no, it's not log plus, but it's a variable, the, the log. So it's like this. Yeah? <laughs> Just to say that to make it positive and only from the right. So I don't interfere with the left. It's an annoying notation, it's not so. <laughs> yeah, okay. And, uh, Crucially different case is uh, uh, case uh, A. A stays for asymmetric. So if Vt has uh, at least one saddle loop, um, it will be on the boundary of this uh, subsurface. Here we have a little bit of uh, a technical condition. So I would like to say typically, and I will tell you what this means in a second. So allow me a little bit. Then uh, R of X uh, has the form star. So let me not rewrite it again. So R of X has the same form, but the constants to the right don't add up to the constants on the left. So this is Arnold case. So think, think of Arnold where you have C, 2C, and C. Right, so this is the Arnold case where you have C and two C, and uh, and uh, uh, notation in this case is that R belongs to asymmetric log of T, and these are asymmetric log singularities. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. So that's exactly why I said that typically. So you would like to say that once, you, if you have only one trap, it should. But even one trap, you could be so unlucky that somehow. No, no, I do. Okay. So typically means here is that uh, uh, constants. For example, the constants uh, of of each saddle of saddles. So each saddle will produce a constant. And you wanted these constants to be, for example, rationally independent. So there cannot be linear relation that uh, cancel them out. Otherwise, you could get symmetry, but for a very uh, a rare circumstance. Okay, so that's exactly a technical point. And uh, uh, okay. And why do I pay so much attention about symmetry or asymmetry? Because symmetry or asymmetry is crucial for mixing. So. Now that we have these uh, carefully defined roofs, we can state the, uh, essentially the theorems which give yesterday picture of mixing in this language. Okay? So maybe I need another more notation. Okay, so, uh, so let me take T is an IT. So if I have an IT, maybe I will uh, remark that there are uh, two data. So if I have these rearrangements of intervals, I have a permutation which describes how the intervals are rearranged. So this is the permutation which gives the order of uh, T 
EI. And you have lengths. Lambda i is the length of this intervals exchanged by t. So we, I will write, when I write almost every i t, you can take as a definition, if you want, of almost every i t, that I will assume that this is a technical point. I need my permutation to be irreducible. And uh, don't worry so much. Uh, uh, this is a combinatorial condition on the permutation. So if uh, you have a subgroup of indices 1k, which is mapped to itself, k has to be equal to everything. So otherwise, uh, there is some trivial subset of your permutation, which is invariant, and you can reduce it. And almost every IT, so I'm assuming this implicitly, even if I don't say it. And this means uh, Lebag almost every the bag almost every lambda 1, lambda d, for almost every choice of the lengths of the intervals. OK? OK. And maybe again, a recall. I know that many people here do know interval exchanges. So, uh, so let me recall you, though, because we'll use it, that almost every IT in this sense is minimal which means that all orbits are dense. Actually, as soon, for example, as the lengths are uh, rationally independent, you can prove minimality. And this is uh, due to Keane in the 70s. Almost every IT is ergodic. Also uniquely ergodic. And this is uh, the first breakthrough of Dijk-Muller dynamics, independently proven by Mesur and Veach in the 80, 82 probably. And, uh, and on the other hand, no IT is mixing. So they are not mixing. And this is Katok in the 80s. And I mentioned this result yesterday. I said that translation flows are never mixing. And translation flows and IETs are the same paper proves this result for translation flows and IETs. On the other hand, IETs are weakly mixing. And Giovanni Forni and Arthur Avila proved this uh, uh, 10 years ago, maybe now more, 15 years ago. More, 15 years ago, 2000, no, 2007, no? Yeah, OK. More than 10 years ago. So I mean, uh, I'm not writing with mixing because we didn't define it. But of course, it's another piece of the history. So all of these are classical results. And uh, uh, what about mixing? So in some sense, these two, minimality and ergodicity, maybe I will write. If you have a 50 special flow over t, phi t is minimal if and only if t is minimal. And uh, phi t is ergodic if and only if t is ergodic. So these properties don't change for the suspension flow. Uh, just a reality check. Does this sound, and I'm not sure if it's familiar to everybody, but you know, if you want your orbits for the special flow, say, to be dense, well, nothing interesting happens when you go from, when you span the fiber. So as long as you are dense in the base, you will be dense in the phase space. And the ergodicity has to do with invariant sets. So if I have an invariant set for the flow, it has to be fully foliated by fibers. So it will project to an invariant set on the base, and conversely. So if there are no invariant sets uh, of trivial measure for the base, there will be no invariant sets of trivial measure for the suspension. So these properties do not depend on the roof. But mixing is a sensitive ergodic uh, property, which crucially depends on the roof. So for example, I can have a base which is as 
uh, chaotic as I wish, but if I put a constant roof, then, you know, and I flow, say, a rectangle, what will happen? Nothing. A rectangle will flow as a rectangle. So no spreading, no phenomenon will happen. So mixing it depends on the choice of the roof. So and similarly weak mixing. Uh, so okay. So sorry for, uh, but I, I know that not everybody uh, works in dynamics. So even these things is better to say them. And uh, now I can state. So theorem, uh, theorem, symmetric theorem S. Uh, and this was, I put, this is in my uh, 11, 12, in my Anna's paper, but uh, uh, I should also mention uh, Sheklov for uh, uh, 5 IET. And, uh, and uh, uh, what should I mention? Uh, for genus 2. And I should mention, uh, uh, okay, Kochergin for when t is a rotation. Okay, so this is the symmetric case. So for almost every IET and any f in uh, the class of symmetric log of t. So for a full measure set of interval exchange transformations, if the roof has a symmetric log singularities, phi t is also not mixing. Maybe I will write weak mixing as a, but weak mixing and uh, ergodic and minimal. And so this corresponds to what yesterday I described as the set, uh, as the set uh, phi t in the set uh, u, was it u1 or u2? Probably u1. Yes, there was a set of flows which have only simple setters. So those fall into this uh, category. So through the special flow representation, you can see them like this. And then you have to prove that this full measure set of IT will give you full measure set of locally Hamiltonian flow in the suitable measure class. And uh, uh, as I said, this was known by Kochergin in the uh, case of rotation. And then there's a special case which was dealt with before uh, my general result. And then there is a complementary theorem, A which uh, I proved for one singularity. And then David uh, uh, extended to the case I will write, to the more general case I will write now. And uh, Sinai and Hanin proved were the case where t is a rotation. So this we have all the references. And the second theorem is for almost every IET and any F with asymmetric log. So this is same picture, but with a symmetry. Uh, phi t and phi t is all, sorry, I didn't say it, but phi t is always the suspension over t under the roof f, right? It was implicit. Uh, for any, so you have t, uh, f, and phi t. Phi t is, is mixing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and maybe I will add. OK, so this on the other hand, correspond to the picture of uh, uh, phi t on S prime uh, in U2. 
So if you have this open set, uh, 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 you to prime. So there is a dense open set in the space of locally Hamiltonian flow with set loops. The dense open sets correspond to the constants not uh, cancelling out. So open and dense come from you don't want your constant to be, <laughs> you can perturb them to make them not cancel out for strange reasons. But in that open set, each minimal component of your flow will have such a representation and be mixing. And here you can improve and you can have quantitative quantitatively mixing, so log sub-polynomial estimates, also in Ravotti. And uh, you can, if you know what, maybe I will say it again at the very end, the last lecture, you can also do mixing of all orders, higher order mixing. And this is a paper of uh, Joanna Kuaga, Kanigowski, and myself for IT and Fayad and Kanigowski for rotations. So I will comment on this in the very, lec very last lecture because it's kind of a recent development of uh, all these techniques. And uh, it's really exploiting shearing in a very deep <laughs> and more quantitative way. OK, so now finally I have precise uh, statements. So um, how are we doing? We have a little bit of, no, five minutes. Well, the, well, well, I don't know. I started at uh, 15 minutes late, right? So we have another 20 minutes? Is that all oh, good, good. So I want to give you the sketch of the mixing ideas in this language and uh, uh, tell you what we are going to do on, on for real in <laughs> some sense on, on uh, 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 in two weeks' time. So first key comment let me make. I wrote almost every IT here, and I wrote almost every IT here. So almost every IT, maybe I'll make this comment, almost every IT is means it's a full measure set. We said full measure, uh, uh, full measure Diophantine condition. So there is a quite expl explicit characterization of what do you need from the interval exchange to have mixing or absence of mixing. And this is what I will really do carefully on the Tuesday, two weeks from now. So this will involve, uh, I will give you whatever the basic minimum I want to know. It will involve, let me just write, some multidimensional continued fractions. And if you know what that means, it's a Rosevich induction. So I will define this and whatever I need. And I want to get to this Diophantine condition on this in the second week. So it will be a key topic. Uh, um, and this is somehow, um, OK, uh, key point. For today, I just want to stay on the soft side and giving you the heuristic picture of uh, shearing and mixing. So we did it at the very beginning. I plotted on the surface. I told you Hamiltonian saddles introduce uh, shearing and mixing happens via shearing if there is shearing. But uh, we uh, didn't have yet the tools to study shearing. Now we have all this formalism set up in order to understand the shearing. So first of all, it's time to, uh, okay, it's time to do a, a toy model example. So, uh, okay, this will be next week. And the next week there will also be plus uh, uh, real, uh, well, plus uh, proofs. I will try to do the proofs of uh, these two theorems, mixing and absence of mixing, at least to give you the key, key outline. But today we'll start with some building up, some intuition. And uh, so toy model, say they just have f uh, which is log x, say just one sided singularity. And uh, so what happens if I take a small interval? 
So J, J is a small horizontal interval. This is my curve transverse to the flow in this uh, special flow picture. It's horizontal, so it's transverse to the vertical flow. And uh, uh, such y small, because when I flow it, uh, say up to some time t, uh, uh, doesn't hit, hit uh, the singularity. So the size of J will be somehow of order 1 over t. Okay, so in times 1 over t, I will maybe not hit. Uh, and then uh, what do I do? I want to flow it. And uh, please look at, the, look at the blackboard. So uh, this is my baby example, but I think if you've never seen it, it's useful. So you flow up, nothing happens until you hit the roof. What happens when I'm here? So when I'm here, actually this point is already gone somewhere else. It's already gone, uh, uh, it's already moved with t. And, uh, uh, but this point moved, so what is happening is that uh, uh, this curve is reappearing, but the shape here is uh, given by the graph of f at that part. Imagine a little bit moving. First point appears and it's already flowing up. Then the other points appear. So this will be the last point to appear. So what I'm gaining is a little bit of slope in the shape of the graph of f. And then if I keep moving, at some point this one fully reappears. And then it hits again, goes with t square again. And this part now, it's I'm adding more. This is uh, sloped in a unique direction. So what I'm doing, every time I'm picking up the graph of f. And maybe I go very close at some point here and I pick up a lot. So you can see the shearing happening. You can see my horizontal transversal is uh, evolving according to Birkhoff sums of the function. Birkhoff sum, and what I'm doing here, I'm taking uh, a piece of f. Here I'm taking a piece of f composed with t. Then I'm taking a piece of f composed with t squared. And, and so on. So now it's where it may be useful to have this formula of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, uh, a bit of a suspension flow that we did at the beginning. So, sorry, phi t of j is made by graphs of this formula of t minus s and n and and f of x so this was the formula which was giving me the evolution you remember we did the suspension flow so you know if i was uh, if i flow at uh, maybe uh, maybe let me write t like this also here mm -hmm. The, the, this is just a formula. So when I flow a point, I get here. So for little segments where n of t is constant, I'm just seeing the graph of this function, the graph of the Birkhoff sums. And you see, this is, co this is the justification for this uh, picture because you see I'm saying, I'm taking f, adding f composed with t, adding f composed t squared. So you see the Birkhoff sum is describing the evolution in the Birkhoff, okay? And say that I want to know the slope. I want, I'm trying to prove that these curves are shear. So my intuition and my picture tell me that these curves are shearing. So shearing, shearing is described or slope or slope of graphs is what is shearing. I have a graph. I just want to know what's the derivative in the x direction. So I just take d dx of t minus 
let's keep it constant. So I'm taking x where and t is constant, so I call it n. And what is this derivative? t doesn't matter, it's a translate. And I have to differentiate the Birkhoff sum. So this is the derivative of uh, uh, the sum of f compose ti of x. Uh, so normally, if you differentiate something like this, you have a chain rule. So you need to differentiate t. But uh, re remember that uh, t is an isometry. My interval exchange has derivative 1. It's a translation. So almost everywhere. So, so there is no chain rule. And if you forgot the chain rule, you didn't make a mistake. So I just have to differentiate f. So what do I get is minus the Birkhoff sums of x of the derivative along the orbit. Okay? So I differentiate each. I just get the derivative here, no chain. And I get the Birkhoff sum of the derivative. Okay, so this is key quantity. So all this work on translation flows was to have a concrete way to study shearing. So shearing of my curves in this picture is given by the gross of the Birkhoff sums of the derivatives of the roof. Okay? So now all this just setting up essentially the tools to uh, quantify shearing and see whether there is or not global shearing. And we also saw in this picture that the local Hamiltonian saddle is producing shearing, and this shearing is related to these logarithmic singularities, okay, which uh, have uh, where well, uh, the slope picks up some some pent, some some slope. <laughs> okay, so now if you who knows the Birkhoff ergodic theorem? OK, almost everybody. So let me tell you, we know that t is ergodic. So we almost every t interval exchange is ergodic from Beach uh, and Mesur. And so if my function, if I have a function which is in L1, we know that everything about Birkhoff sums. Uh, we know that these Birkhoff sums converge to the integral of g uh, for almost every x when I divide it by n, right? So we know that the Birkhoff sums will grow linearly as the integral times n. But <laughs> uh, if the life was so easy, we, there was not nothing interesting to prove. So the issue is that if f has log singularities, then what about the derivative? The derivative? What is the derivative of log? 1 over x. So has 1 over x type uh, singularities. So it blows up like 1 over the distance. And uh, but 1 over x is not in L1. So you cannot apply the birkhoff ergodic theorem. So you know, when I teach to undergraduate students, Remember to check the assumptions before applying the ergodic theorem. Here, you cannot. <laughs> and indeed, it's not true that the Birkhoff sums will grow, will grow uh, 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 like an integrable function. So maybe it is time to, uh, I don't know if it is time or not. OK, it's time. No, I will not make the formal statement, but I will make the informal statement. Of, so Monday, uh, Monday, no, not Monday. Tuesday in two weeks from now. So we will show we will show that under suitable diophantine conditions on the interval exchange, we will be able basically to we need to prove some kind of Birkhoff theorem for non-integrable function in this special setup. So we need to have some precise no notion of equidistribution for the interval exchange which will be coming from the Diophantine condition, and by hand study the behavior of Birkhoff sums for this type of functions. And we will prove that, let me write it informally, Sn in, in if f is asymmetric, 
and this is where it's crucial, if uh, S prime of x will actually not grow like n, but it will grow like uh, uh, a constant, and this constant will be the asymmetric constant, times n times log n for most points. And I mean, I will be, I not don't want a statement now, for most points. So most points grow more than linearly. Okay, so they have this extra log term. Hmm? Why do you need asymmetry? So in this picture, in this picture, I, I had only one side, so everything was easy. Everything was shearing in the direction opposite to the slope. If you have two singularities, warning, if f is symmetric log, if there are, if uh, the, the, the two singularities have the same power, sometimes I gain in one sense, sometimes I lose in the other sense. So th there could be cancellations between the shearing. And this is exactly what we will prove typically. So if f is asymmetric log, there are a cancellation. Uh, occurs. And you have to be very careful to, to make this constellation happen, the, which reminds me that there is a part I forgot to tell you. In this symmetric case, for almost every IT, we will have cancellations, so we will not have shearing. And this will be the crucial way to disprove mixing. But uh, let me tell you that there's a, a result by Chaika and uh, Alex Wright, John Chaika and Alex Wright, which I think appeared in GEMS. And they actually built, in this class of symmetric, there, be, there exists an IET of maybe five, maybe the surface, uh, five intervals, right? So I forgot, maybe more. I for there exists a special IET, which is ergodic and uniquely ergodic, but just barely, and it's all which for which actually Orbits on the base are not well equidistributed and they spend much more time on one side than the other. So even if the roof is symmetric, you can still gain shearing. And uh, they have a mixing, mixing example. So almost every is not mixing in the asymmetric case, but exceptionally, you can still generate mixing from a typical basis. And uh, uh, okay, I, I want to maybe finish with the picture here because then we will do. Uh, so the picture here is then uh, uh, again I will make formal this statement, but morally, this non-L1 type of singularity of the derivative give you gross of uh, uh, Birkhoff sums of the derivative. Did I erase it? No, it's not erase it. So let's wrap it up. So if f is asymmetric, then uh, essentially what you can prove is that when uh, uh, you take a curve of uh, size uh, uh, 1 over t, say, and uh, then you can prove, <coughs> maybe I'll draw the asymmetric picture. So you have your j, and you choose it so that it's not broken in time t by heating the singularity. And what do you see? <coughs> you see that the slope, so uh, slope grows like uh, t. It's all slope is order of uh, t log t. This comes from the n log n. Okay, so you're proving that this uh, little curve will kind of, the slope of this evolution will grow like t log t. And uh, this is still heuristic, but um, so then uh, this means that there is a shear. The shear, I mean how much the two endpoints are far apart. The shear will be, the derivative is t log t, the size is 1 over t, the shear will be of order log t. So you will have, uh, so your horizontal fixed size curve 
uh, flowing will become a curve of length log t, which is more and more vertical. I lost everybody. So let me plot it. So phi t of j will look something like this. Will look like uh, the more it shears, the more it has time to wrap around my surface. So this is, in this uh, picture, what we represented in at the very beginning on the surface. So short transversal arcs, shear, and shadow a trajectory of the flow. And then, um, okay, maybe we'll start here next time. But uh, then you can see this uh, uh, mixing via shearing. So say that you have a small rectangle A, you can kind of uh, do some Fubini in the horizontal and cover each horizontal line into many arcs. Throw away those that are too small or throw away those which are not well distributed. You can throw some small measure. But most of these arcs individually will shear and shadow a trajectory. So most of these small arcs will become a long trajectory, will shadow a long trajectory of the flow. And the flow is equidistributed. So trajectories of the flow spend the right amount of time in this uh, rectangle B. So you can reduce uh, mixing to equidistribution of the flow, which you know by ergodicity of the IETs. So that's the way you prove uh, mixing. So maybe I will say just a little bit more. But in some sense, I will also do the opposite is also true. This is the only way to get mixing in this setup. And this is how we will disprove mixing. So if the base is sufficiently rigid, and IETs are sufficiently rigid in a sense which we will explain in two weeks. Actually, the only way to get mixing is having shearing. So if the base has some rigidity and uh, there is no shearing, there is no mixing. And that's how we will prove uh, the absence of mixing result. So really, you should think this uh, mixing via shearing in this context of entropy zero dynamics is very common and very basic mechanism for, for shearing. And really, mixing via shearing, I should say, is not, uh, it's not, it wasn't invented by me. It was already used by Marcus for the horror cycle flow, by Sinai and Hanin and Kochergin for the previous cases of these results. And Bassam Fayyad has a nice mixing time changes of linear flows that also use uh, shearing in this elliptic uh, dynamics rare examples. So what then what is really kind of mm, oh, to do is to deal with interval exchanges and these Diophantine conditions which produce the shearing. And then, but it's a good mm, thing to remember. Ma mixing via shearing, very important feature in many parabolic dynamical systems. OK? Hope to see you back in two weeks. Yeah. <clears throat>